there and welcome. I'm Bob Proctor. Do you know, for the past 58 years, I've been studying one subject, why we do what we do and why we don't do many of the things we'd really like to do. And it's very, very interesting what I found out. Now, let me explain to you. I believe that you and I are cheating ourselves every day. And it's because of the way we're programmed. We're intelligent people. We've got marvelous mental faculties. We're God's highest form of creation. There's nothing on the planet that will equal you or me. However, we don't win. There's only about 4 or 5% of the population that really make things happen. 95% are struggling all the way from the cradle to the casket. Why do they do that? Because they don't know any better. Well, I'm going to show you why they do it. There's a program in their subconscious mind. And that program is called a paradigm. See, a paradigm is a mental program that has almost exclusive control over our habitual behavior. Think about that. And almost all of our behavior is habitual. It's crazy, but that's just the way it is. See, we wake up in the morning, we just move into action. We don't stop and say, why am I doing this? Or is this the best thing to do? Is this really going to get me the results I want? We just move into action. And you know, people next door are doing it, and the people on the next street are doing it, and the people in the next town and in the next country. This is universal. This is all over the place. Now, this book changed my life. I'm going to share with you the most valuable idea that I have learned from studying this book for the past 58 years. As a matter of fact, one idea and the chapter in this book has been responsible for me earning millions of dollars. Now, you may think, well, I couldn't earn millions of dollars. Oh, yes, you really could. See, when I started, when I got this book, I was 26. That was a long time ago. But I had virtually no formal education. I had two months high school. I had no business experience. I was earning $4,000 a year, but I owed $6,000. I owed everybody and his brother money. And when I read this and got to studying it, things started to change. Now, let me tell you where this book came from and I'll get into the idea that changed my life. If you pay attention, this idea will change your life, and it'll change your life like night and day. Now, there's the man and the statement that changed Napoleon Hill's life. Napoleon Hill is the young reporter on the right-hand side. Napoleon Hill is the author of Think and Grow Rich. Andrew Carnegie was the wealthiest man in the world in 1908. He had uh, immigrated as a young boy with his parents from Scotland. They had nothing. But by 1908, he was the wealthiest man in the world. Now, Hill was working for a little magazine. And the magazine got the idea of writing uh, stories on wealthy people. Hill got the responsibility of interviewing Andrew Carnegie for three hours, the wealthiest man in the world. I've often thought what, Hill, what was going on in Hill's mind when he went in to interview him. It must have been really intimidating uh, for him in the beginning. But at any rate, unbeknownst to Hill, Carnegie had been searching for someone. He thought it was an absolute crime that people like himself, like uh, Harvey Firestone, uh, Thomas Edison, Henry Ford, uh, people that amassed millions and millions of dollars, it thought it was a shame they were going to their grave with all the knowledge locked up in their bones. And he said, somebody should write the laws of achievement so that anybody could go out and live the good life. We're God's highest form of creation. At the end of the three-hour interview, Carnegie thought, this young man may be the person I'm looking for. He said, this interview isn't ending, Napoleon. This interview is just beginning. I want you to come home with me. Now, later on, Hill explained that he was glad he took him home because he said he didn't have enough money to rent a hotel room. They spent three days together. And at the end of the three days, Carnegie said, now, Napoleon, I've explained my entire philosophy. I'm going to ask you a question. And this is where he was going to determine whether Hill was the guy or not. He said, I want you to listen carefully to me. And I just want a yes or a no answer. He said, would you spend the rest of your life, dedicate the rest of your life to an idea for which you would probably receive no material compensation for at least 20 years? Now, unbeknownst to Hill, Carnegie had a stopwatch in his hand under the desk. He had given him 60 seconds to answer. In 25 seconds, Napoleon says, yes, sir, I will. 
huge move. I've asked myself a thousand times, would I have said yes? And I think I would have. I think if you had spent three days with this guy, you'd realize he's not going to ask you something that isn't fair. Now, he said, you're getting no subsidy. He said, I'm not going to subsidize you. He said, what I will do, I will introduce you to some of the world's greatest leaders. And I want you to interview them. And I want you to put together this information. I want you to organize it so that the average person in the street will know how to do exactly what I've done or what any of the other winners have done. It was a big project. Now, he said, Napoleon, long before the 20 years are up, he said, you're going to be tested. Everything you're going to want to quit. So I'm going to give you a statement, and I want you to write this down. I want you to write every word, and I want you to underline it. And this is a statement. He said, now, this is where you're going to be talking to me, but you're talking to yourself. You write this down. Andrew Carnegie, I'm not only going to equal your achievements in life, I'm going to meet you at the post and pass you at the grandstand. Think about it. Andrew Carnegie, I'm not only going to equal your achievements in life, I'm going to challenge you at the post and pass you at the grandstand. Hill said he threw his pen on the floor and he said, no, you know darn well that's not going to happen. And Carnegie said, no, I know it's not going to, Napoleon, unless and until you burn that idea into your subconscious mind. Now he said, I want a commitment from you that you will look in the mirror and read that to yourself every morning and again every night. And Hill said, well, yes, I could do that. So he made a commitment to do that. So every morning, he started to look in the mirror and read that. Andrew Carnegie, I'm not only going to equal your achievements in life, I'm going to challenge you at the post and pass you at the grandstand. And he said he felt like a fool doing this. And he said he didn't think this was ridiculous. But by the middle of the month, he thought maybe this will work. By the end of the month, he knew it was going to work. Do you know, Andrew Carnegie, so far as I've been able to turn, made something like 50 millionaires. Napoleon Hill has made millions of millionaires and is still making them. Now, this is the part where I really made a breakthrough. I remembered where it said he only gave him 60 seconds to answer the question. Most people take 60 years to answer a good question. And this is what's written in the book on that page. Take a look. Analysis of several hundred people who had accumulated fortunes well beyond the million dollar mark disclosed the fact that every one of them had the habit of making decisions promptly and changing them very slowly if and when they were changed. And he pointed out then the ones that were losing, they made their decisions very slow and changed them fast and often. See, hardly anybody has, knows how to make a decision. Most people have never learned how to make a decision. Great opportunities put in front of them. They don't even know how to handle it. So they pass it. Now, I'm going to show you something about making a decision that I have learned over the past 58 years. When John Kennedy, when he was president of the United States, asked Dr. Warner Von Braun what it would take to build a rocket that will carry a person to the moon and bring him back safely to Earth, he answered him in just five words. That's all he needed was five words. He said, the will to do it. That's all he needed. He didn't need the money, didn't need scientists, didn't need Congress on his side. The will to do it. Now, I'm going to bring that up again. I want you to remember that. That was the only thing Dr. Werner von Braun said you needed. Now, I want you to look at this for a moment. Most people are extras in their own movie. I hope you're not. But if you are, I want you to think about it. What do you mean they're extras in their own movie? Well, they're looking at somebody else winning and say, gosh, I wished I was them. If only I could do that. If only I. And they gaga at somebody else. Do you know what the problem is? You've never really figured out what you want. What do you really want? Hardly anybody can answer that question. And when the idea of what they do want comes to their mind, instantly they start to figure out why they can't have it. I want you to think of what you want. If there's an opportunity placed right in front of you, don't pass it up. Pay attention to what I'm going to show you here. Let these lines represent levels of vibration. There's a law of the universe called vibration. That law decrees that everything moves, nothing rests. You know that a body in a coffin is moving. Now, that may sound way out of here. 
But listen, if you looked at the body through a microscope, you'd see it moving. And if it wasn't moving, how would it ever change to dust? Everything in the universe is moving. The walls in the room you're in are moving. Look at them through a microscope, you'll see them moving. Everything vibrates, nothing rests. We literally live in an ocean of motion, okay? Now, each level of vibration is referred to as a frequency. Think of that. We think on frequencies. Think of this. Your phone operates on a frequency. It has its own frequency. Everybody has their own frequency on a phone. And if I've got your frequency programmed in here, I can hit a button and I can send a picture from wherever I am to the other side of the world and simultaneously with me hitting send, it's on your phone. That's not magic. That's science. Well, think of this for a moment. We think on frequencies. Now let these puffy little clouds represent your thoughts. Okay? It's your thoughts that produce your results. See, this is the one point all great leaders have agreed on. We become what we think about. They disagreed on virtually everything else. But this one point, we become what we think about. So we're sitting here and these are our results. Now, it's, it's, it's inherent within the human to want something more than they've got. Dissatisfaction is a creative state. My grandmother, when I was a little boy, told me I should be satisfied with what I got. Grandma was wrong. Should never be satisfied with what you've got. Should be happy with it, but dissatisfied. Dissatisfaction is a creative state. She'd say, that's what I've got, but that's where I want to go. That's where I want to go. And I'm going to go there. I'm going to do that when? As soon as I get the money. I'm going to do that as soon as the kids are out of school. What did Dr. Werner von Braun say to Kennedy when he said, what would it take to build a rocket to go to the moon? Will to do it. I'm going to do that as soon as they get more time. Think of it. And pretty soon, the decision dies. When the decision dies, then the goal dies. What they're going to do, it fades. And so you go through life one time after another. What's the problem? Well, the problem is that they're thinking down here on this frequency. And the ideas to get to where they want to go are on a much higher frequency. They're way up here. So you've got to operate on the frequency that the good you desire is on. And if you don't, you, don't, you just don't win. So you see, you're going to make a committed decision. This is, I, I want to do this. This I will do. I don't know how. I don't know anywhere all the help's going to come, but I'm going to do it. When you make a committed decision, everything in your life changes. You begin to think and act. You see what happened to the old way of thinking? It's gone, and you're up here on a higher frequency. You're thinking the thoughts now that's going to give you the good you desire. In other words, you're thinking how you can and not why you can't. You're not spending any reason, any time thinking of why you can't. Do you know that want is the only prerequisite for making a decision. Do you want to? It doesn't matter with you we got the money. Look at all the stuff you have in your house. You don't need most of that stuff. You know why you got it? Because you want it. Go take a look in your clothes. Look at all your clothes. You don't need all those clothes. You know why you got them? Because you want them. When you want something bad enough, you always figure out how to get it. The problem is most people, when they want something, they can't see how they get it. They let the idea die. Don't let that happen. See, this is why successful people make decisions so fast. That's what Carnegie was looking for in Hill. Can you make a fast decision? See, that's why Von Braun answered the question so fast. He knew the only thing anybody needs to make anything happen is the will to do it. See, the will is a mental faculty that gives you the ability to hold one idea on the screen of your mind to the exclusion of all outside distractions. That's the way it works. It's a beautiful concept that hardly anybody understands. Now, can you make a decision? A committed decision very fast? I'm going to tell you, if you can, if you will discipline yourself to say, this is what I'm going to do, you will always find the help to do it. Discipline is the ability to give yourself a command and follow it. I hope you get something out of this. Because I'm going to tell you, this idea has changed my life, and it'll change yours too. Act on the idea. You got an opportunity in front of you. Don't think about it. Act on it. Just get out there and do it. And you're going to find life will become very different. Make a decision.
This is Bob Proctor. Thank you.